Hello everyone, welcome back to 20th Century Food Court. We're going to do the commissary today. Uh, I mean, welcome back to Last Call BBS, specifically 20th Century Food Court, food court part of it. <clears throat> Even experienced 20th Century hands can occasionally forget how much of the period was dominated by the institutions of school and prison. Remind yourself, by experiencing the flavors of mass food, con oh, mass food contracting with these school or prison meals... Uh, oh no, I don't need to look at the machine. Oh, we have a microwave now. That's exciting. Ah. Ooh. Goodness gracious, there's a lot of ingredients. And there's five selectors for what you're gonna do? Like, there's always one of two drinks. Yeah, plain and chocolate. What are the, are there like sides and, main, and, and mains? It looks like there might be five different mains, right? Pizza, tender, burger, corn dog. What the hell is this? This is another tender. Okay, so there's four mains. Okay. And then for sides, I guess we have curly, crinkle, and tot. Okay, they're all just kind of potato sides. Got it. Microwave burgers, microwave pizza, both of them for four ticks. Fry everything else, I'm hoping just for four ticks always. And presumably they mean everything else but not the milk. And then you stack it all. Okay. It's a lot to... Okay, thank... All right, I was gonna say, like, do we need, like, 15 different dispensers? No, we have one dispenser with... Huh. With seven things that can be dispensed, and we have to combine those in various ways. Why is it only three? Ah, seven, because there's two... There's also the two, um... Milk is kept separately. Makes sense. Actually, I guess... This is the milk dispenser, because it doesn't need to be frozen. It's a fridge. This is the freezer. Okay. So... It seems reasonable to suppose that each day could be a um, a sequencer dispensing the various things for that day. The problem is how do we decide how do we route the, th the foods right? We're gonna get two things out of the freezer every day. And we need to send them different places. I mean, only pizzas and burgers need to be... ...microwaved. So maybe we can have this thing, like... Put a router in front of this thing, right? And have it go straight into a fryer as kind of the default option. And then on the, the two occasions that we need something microwaved, then we can divert to the left or the right or, or whatever. So how does a microwave work? I mean, it's pretty similar. Yeah, sense and eject, got it. So it's the same as a fryer. Oops. 
So, I mean, we probably want a stacker here, and thanks to my revelation in, I think, the last episode, we can finally stop putting sensors in front of these and save ourselves a bunch of space. We'll just have the stacker emit, like, the count signal itself. So, uh, I mean, each of these five can be treated pretty uniformly, right? We just need something that, like... Well, <sighs> didn't we have a problem before with, it was on like the donut level, right? Where we had problems timing this fryer. Because the the timer counted down four times and then ejected the donut, but then it counted down a fifth time as it was ejecting the donut. And so it was hard to keep the times stable or something like that. Yeah, well, wait, where's our... Okay, it was two, but... Yeah, so he counts plus two, and then it ejects, but it, like, goes to minus one briefly. And then when it gets here, we have to fix it. And so we're going to have some similar problems, I think if we try to fry two things, which will happen three days of the week, I think. Yeah. sensor here. I get like, yes, the idea was I would sense when I ejected a donut, but where is the fryer? Here it is. Why not just like when you eject, also add one to the counter and then you don't need this, right? So if I put another mixer in here instead and took this thing that's going to eject and sent it here. Oh, whoops. Zero, right. So send this to here and then sorter B is going to this plus one. But shouldn't it just always be wired to left? Well, if we removed this order, it would be, right? So this goes to plus one immediately. Right? So of course the one donut case will work fine. Because we don't care about the timing results. But now... It went up to three, that's too high.
Uh, this stays icy. The problem is this thing being zero triggers for multiple ticks. Because we don't get the feedback in right away. All right, forget it. Let's just undo all these changes. Okay, that looks good. So we're gonna have to do something about that. This seems easy, right? We can just dispense the milk straight away, according to the day, and stack it right on. And this could probably be all the way over here, right? I mean, I don't know. We might end up, end up not needing that much space, I guess. And if you don't need it all, you would prefer for this to be closer to the exit. <clears throat> so, like... We obviously want a fryer here. And I think we want a microwave... Like... Here, right? In fact, maybe I can do that? And then the trick is just figuring out how to orchestrate, like... Frying... Two things, right? Because all the rest of this is just sequencers and mixers. You know, I guess I can save a conveyor belt this way. It's probably going to cost us time to do so, so we can try both solutions. Actually, hang on. We can have the best of both worlds, right? Go this way? That's not the best of both worlds. It uses up everything. No, 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 right. The point was to do this. Oh, that makes it come at the same time as... All right, this is fine. The milk is never going to be the bottleneck, so we can kind of just put it wherever it's convenient. And, I mean, honestly, it looks like we don't really need all this space, right? Given that I'm not doing anything fancy except with the wiring, I just have this. So... Can I not do this? Uh, the milk is going to be a problem because it'll get there too soon. But we can always delay that with the sequencer. So I think this is like the... F no. Why don't I just run this from the bottom so it has less distance to travel then? I don't know. I'm like optimizing when I haven't even solved the problem, which is kind of bad. put this here because it'll we can make it come out of a sequencer it probably it will be coming out of a sequencer right so it'll take a tick right if we say like on monday dispense plain milk there will be a collision but if we say on monday use a sequencer and one of the things you output is a plain milk as soon as possible there's no collision, so this is fine. Hmm. 
So, okay, I've done the easy part now. <laughs> uh, even though it did take a little fiddling to realize this was what I wanted to do. And I'm pretty sure we can't possibly collide with the tray at this point. Oh, do you know what? We can always, if we want, unconditionally send the first item through to the fryer. Because there's always going to be at least one fried thing. And then we can shunt the next one over to the microwave, if appropriate. Now, we could also make this a sorter instead. And then it would have the ability to like hold up something going into the fryer, if we wanted. But I can always just delay sending it out of the freezer, so I don't, I don't think that's very valuable. And this way I don't have to spend a wire on going straight, if that's what I want to do. Alright, well, we may as well get started. See if I can make, like, see where we're going to get on this. So, we need a few things. We obviously need a mixer for plain and a mixer for chocolate, so let's do that. I think we pretty obviously need five sequencers. I can't imagine doing it any other way. In fact, maybe I can put them all on the second row so they're clearly like implicitly labeled by their positions as Monday through Wednesday. All right, there's space for one more thing here. I don't know, that. So on Monday, we would need chocolate milk, a tender, and a crinkle. And those all go straight. So I never have to send anything to the router in that case. So let's send out, like, we'll have column A represent the main on each of these, I guess. B, the side, and C, the milk. So they're always going to dispense some milk on tick one. And one of their mains on tick one, right? So we can, in fact, just color this in without even thinking about it. And then the question is just what to do with the sides. Or actually, wait a minute. We're sending something through the fryer every time, but the one thing that's always fried is actually the side. Now I could just say, oh, well, A will be the side then, but I want, I think it's easier to remember if I have B be the side, so I'm going to relabel all of this. So you always send out the fry, the side, which I guess is fries, basically, and the milk <clears throat> at the same time. So what days do we have? We have plain milk on Tuesdays and Thursdays and chocolate on other days. So C goes to plain, sorry, yeah. For this day and this day, C goes to plain. For other days, it goes to chocolate. Oh, I haven't hooked anything up to these. Sure. So on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So there you go. We got the right milk for a Monday. It's already looking a bit horrendous. <clears throat> 
Now, there's a few things we can initialize at startup time, right? Well, I guess I could send, I could plug in the sides, right? So, oh man. Each of the sides is, well, they're, actually it can't be the case that the sides are all used multiple times, right? There's only three sides in five days, so. It looks like the crinkle cut fries are used only once, right? Or no, are these curly fries? These are curly, these are crinkle, no, these are, these are tots, and these are crinkles. So we only use curly fries once, so that doesn't need a mixer. We can just say on Thursday, go ahead and ship a crinkle fry. A curly fry. Yeah. And then we need mixers for the other two kinds of fries. This is the crinkle fry. This is the tater tot. So which days do we have which of those? We have tots on Tuesday and Wednesday, right? That's what this is? Yes, okay. Tuesday and Wednesday, we get tots. On the other two days, therefore, we must be shipping out some crinkles. Now, we haven't programmed the fryer yet, so this is just gonna make a, a very warm disaster, also known as a hot mess. But we've already <coughs> gotten a fair way through programming the sequencers, isn't that nice? Um, And the hamburger and pizza are each only used once. So I don't really need a multi-mixer to represent hamburger or pizza. But I do need a multiplexer for like, turn on route to the oven, please. Um, because we need to do that for two different things. Let's actually just put the stacker up there because we know that doesn't, well, I don't know. It needs input from the timer. Um, I don't know. Here's fine, I guess, but it needs a mixer, so I can't really do that. Um, I don't know. So what days do we have stuff that goes in the oven. Tuesday is hamburger, Friday is pizza. So this can be the hamburger input. And then it also needs to, on like, I think this tick, change the router, right? So go left. Now if we switch to Tuesday, We spat out one of those. We're gonna follow it up with a burger. Okay, we have to actually route it on the same turn as the burger. I thought it might take a little, there might be some routing delay. So if I do this though, oh, and how nice is it that they both get into their thing at the same time? So when I release them, they'll join this belt on the same time, which means they won't, um, they won't collide. I still don't understand the rules for when it's okay to collide. So then we can do the same thing for Friday. Have A go to pizza. And now we need that multi-mixer for this thing. So instead of just going left, we're gonna go up here. And this feeds things left. Okay, so that's still fine. And that's fine as well. We The thing we cooked is a pizza, right? Yeah. 
It looks kind of desiccated and sad, but it's a pizza. So these days are easy. I could finish these days. I just have to work out, like, the frying, right? Um, so if this gets here on tick, one, two, three, four. We want this to be ready on, I don't know, something like four turns later? Let's just try it and see. Um, so we do need mixers for... Tender. We need a mixer for tender, because that is requested in two different days. For corn dog, we might or might not. Okay, which days do the tenders come in on? Monday and Thursday. So Monday, I think we need a gap of four, don't we? For all of these. Maybe it's only a gap of three, we'll see. So D on these days is a tender. While on Wednesday it is a corn dog. Oh, whoops, I wired. Get out of here. I wanted to wire this one up. And so if we look at Thursday, let's say, what I want to know is is the tender going to get there too early? Apparently not, because I never sent it at all. Oh, I didn't wire up input A on these. Right. I wired up input D, but that doesn't go anywhere. Or like, there's no... I never asked for a D. So these should go to A instead. Yeah, it arrives at the perfect time that we could spit this out and let another thing in. Okay. Now, we certainly could deliver things... Oops. Uh, I don't know how loud that was. Probably not too loud, but you definitely heard it. We certainly could deliver things a tick faster if we didn't use sequencers for the first thing we spit out. If we just use sequencers for what has to come next. But I don't really want to have to do all that wiring and I don't care that much about being as efficient as possible. Okay. So, an obvious thing that we need is a timer to control the oven and the timer to control... Wait a minute. I don't think I need a timer for the oven. Because... I know that I'll be putting stuff through the oven at exactly the same rate I'm putting stuff through the fryer. If I send anything to the oven at all. And if I don't send anything to the oven, it doesn't really matter when I tell the oven to eject. So I don't need the oven sensing, and I can have it eject at the same time the fryer does, right? So I can just have one timer for the fryer. And I think we do need the big one. Um... Right? So that we can detect when some, like, 
Because, like, okay, it seems sort of obvious, I think, to have start give this a good old plus four, right? Or maybe a minus four? And then when a fry senses, we send a minus one back. And when this is zero, we eject from both of them, right? Um, So if we look at a day like Tuesday when they're making a hamburger, we should actually be like done, right? They both come out beautifully and we just have to program the stacker, which is very easy. Here it is. So we need a mixer for the start input, I guess. One thing it does is send a four there. And then we need another counter for the stacker. Programmed at three and minus one. Where start... Uh-oh, yeah, that's right. Sends a plus three. When you stack something, you minus one. When this is zero, you eject. And so I think Tuesday and Thursday are done now. Okay, a little slower than my sensor-based solution, I think, right? Because the stacker takes a moment to, like, this takes a sec to tick down to zero. Whereas when the sensor was up here, it spit stuff out faster, but this is fine. And so the only thing left to do is revamp the fryer, right? So Instead of having start control the fryer, I said when they're like if I, if I if I wired this up to a sensor and said right before you toss something into the fryer, increase the timer by four, right? And that way there wouldn't be any confusion of this thing. Yeah, I think that's better. And so then start can only point to this one, and we don't need this mixer, which is nice. So there's my sorter. When it senses, I need to do two different things. So I need... Put it down here. No, that's my timer. When it senses, I need to do two things. So I need a mixer. One is bump this by four. I guess we're still gonna run into the problem with this thing, right? Anyway, the other is send yourself left. So if I go to a day like Monday, I think we're going to be off by one somewhere, right? Uh, 
Yeah, see, this just says three now. So let's, let's look again at how long eject is high. Oh, this thing is ejecting every time this is zero. So that would be way too often if I had this feedback into increasing this thing, right? Or well, no, if I had this start at four at the beginning, maybe it would be, I don't know. So, one thing I could do, which I kind of hate, would be to have this sensor actually add five. Obviously that causes us a problem on the first day, on the first cooked item, but if I have start, also subtract one, Oh man, I need another mixer for this, don't I? The worst. Then we get a minus one going up to four, right? And then this counts down all the way to four, or all the way to zero and then minus one but it goes back up to four and we're like set, right? So I think we might be done. And look at all the excess space I had. An entire, I could squeeze an entire mixer in there. And, I mean, honestly, I feel like we only could have been one tick faster. Two ticks. Because this scanner is getting a delay, and the sequencer on dispensing the, the first item is also delayed. Which both could have been avoided with different uh, programming. I'll live with it. Really eye-opening and educational experience. Can't believe they used to subject children to the barbaric practice called school. Love those trays. It's totally nuts how much of ancient society was built around food. That is a little bit nuts. You have me on that. The cost was actually below average. I guess people were maybe using more conveyor belts than necessary? Mysterious. Um, I wonder... This, I don't know, I thought maybe I could use fewer mixers if I used a bigger timer, which is true. Because, um, Oh, you know, I bet I, well, there are ways you could be faster in addition to the two ticks I counted, I think. Um, because you just have to devote more space and maybe more wiring, which is hard to avoid, afford. But like if you, the fryer is further away than necessary in order to make the oven closer. Well, first of all, that's just stupid, right? Can I not just switch these two? Not so easily, I guess, because the fryer needs a router, in or a scanner in front of it. A, a sorter.
It's just that on days when they don't need to microwave anything, you could go through the fryer a bit more quickly, save two ticks if you didn't have to go up there. Right, those are our slowest days by far, and so optimizing for that would improve our maximum speed. It's no big deal, though. I'm just going to leave it as is. What do you think? Could we do the wings today? Let's see how slow it is. The buffalo wing was thought to lend its wings of victory to gladiators in the arena. The more wings one could eat, it was said, the greater one chance one's own team would win. This sometimes resulted in excessive consumption, and death by wing was not uncommon. Ooh, is this like a hot sauce thing, or a, it's just a grill, right? We just have to make three, six, or nine of something? That's, that's nice. Hmm. I see. So they want alternating, and I, I don't think the order matters, so we could send them out in whatever order, but... Oh, boy. That's tricky. Because... Oh, I see. Slice chicken and slice again. I thought we were going to have to, like, throw away a half chicken. But we're not. We're sending the chicken back in. Oh, and it's even alternating which outputs we get based on whether we put in a whole chicken or the remaining half chicken. Right? So that might be actually quite friendly. Maybe not, though. Well, wait a minute. Cutlets and legs fry for the same amount, right? What do you mean ratio does not matter? Oh, I see. Your point is... Well, no, I don't know. You're saying if we wanted to, it would be totally fine to ship out six legs and three cutlets. Even though that's not what would ordinarily be produced by this thing, I think. Because it produces a leg and a cutlet, or a leg and a cutlet in the other order. So... When we're asked for six... We take one chicken and cut it up into four things and serve all of those. And we take another chicken and cut it into half, fry two of them, but then send the other one away. The other half away into the waste basket. So that's one waste item. If we have three things, we slice a chicken and then slice it again and throw away the one excess thing. So again, one trash item. For nine, though, we have two trash items, right? Oops. Oh, sorry, dropped my phone on the desk there after getting a text. Uh, heading out on vacation tomorrow. Or, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm taking a flight. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe, I, I, maybe I'll have time to record one more video after this before the trip, but I don't know. I had, like, almost two weeks of backlog recorded anyway, so there probably won't be much of an interruption in the last call BBS at least. So, but for nine things, you have to slice up two whole chickens to get eight things out, and then slice up one more and throw away two things. And each waste basket only holds one thing, so you need two waste baskets. Oh, or do you? Is there some trick you could do that would be better than slicing up, like, no. I thought maybe maybe there's some reason to not slice up one of the half chickens you get from the first two chickens. And maybe that would let you use only one waste basket. But no. 
Because if you do that, you've made like six things and thrown away one thing, and you still need three more, which means you have to slice up another chicken and throw something away anyway. So... I mean, the routing seems hard. Right? Well... Maybe not, actually. Maybe. Each of these order sizes can be kind of decomposed into... Mm, into three different numbers. Those numbers being... How many fall chickens to dispense, how many times to feed something into the slicer, and how many items to dispense total at the end. And I think from all three of those numbers, you can reconstruct exactly what to do at each step. Right? For example, Let's start, let's start putting stuff down. So we want a stacker there, obviously. Um, and I think we're going to want a router. to decide whether to throw away one of the chicken bits. <laughs> Let's scoot all this over to make more space. And we want our slicer to look something like this. No, there's the input. Um, yeah, and what comes out of it is always something we want. And what comes out of it, the right of it is also always something we want. Ah, so it would be better to do it like this. And what comes out of the left We either want to feed back into it or throw away. Depending on whether the number of things we still want to slice is positive, right? So we could do like a sorter there and garbage here. And I think it turns out we can do this. Oh, this should feed down, of course. I think it turns out we can squeeze this in a little low. No, not we can't squeeze it in a little lower because we have to do this, right? Oh, wait, I don't have to cook the chicken or anything, do I? Okay, I do. That's right. I forgot about cooking it. I was like, wait a minute. How come this stuff is coming out of the freezer and then just getting sent straight to a stacker? That's no good. Um, 
Aw, oh, man. That's gonna... Maybe add a little bit of complication. Because... I don't really have space here to put a fryer into. Oh, maybe I do. Maybe if I did this. No, not that. But if I toss a fryer in here... Now, this has the problem that if we cut the chicken too fast, we're going to run into delays at the fryer, right? I don't know. Let's see if they're willing to wait for each other. Um, so let's, for now, just try dispensing a chicken and having this thing always go straight through. Oh, the tray can't go that way. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Hmm. But now this stuff has to go here, right? Except there's no space to decide what to do now. Has to do this, kind of. Ah! I don't have space to fry it now. Well, I guess what I'm supposed to do is maybe move this whole assemblage down a bit so it can just join up with this whenever it wants to instead of having to make do with this tiny cramped 4x5 space. Um, Don't quite have room to do that. So something like this then. A fryer. And then this guy, right? Or actually, this would be better, I guess. Oh, they only need to fry for one tick. So they're not even going to get in each other's way. Can I just wire sense up to eject? No, it says two ticks. But also, that didn't even count as a single tick? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be two. Um, just out of curiosity, like, what would happen if you like sent something through two fryers, does that cook it at all? I'm guessing no. Because it's not spending a turn sitting still in the fryer. It's just like kind of coasting over the top. Yeah, okay. Well, it didn't seem like it was likely to be a good way to solve it anyway. So this like whole resetting the fryer sucks. 
um, like it always does. But oh, we need a uh... this to be a router, I guess. So when we're done making items, we can throw the rest away. Obviously it needs to start out going right, so we'll just do that for our little experiment. Our exploratory session. So, the fryer timer is obviously a thing, right? It, like, it needs some stuff happening to it. And I guess we're going to do the same trick of having a plus three and a minus one. So when we start, put a plus three there. I need, that needs to be a mixer as well, of course, because I'm going to need to do it multiple times. So at start, send a plus three. Or no, wait a minute. Just send a plus three. Maybe this can be a sorter, actually, right? Because it needs to. We need a sensor out of it anyway. Yeah. And for now, we'll just have it always point right. We're gonna fix it later. Oh, except we already have to fix it a little bit because it needs to do more than one thing when it senses. Push itself right and also give this a plus three, right? The fryer, when it senses something, gives a minus one. When it's zero, it ejects. But this isn't gonna work, is it? Oh, and at start, please dispense some chicken. This isn't gonna work because the second piece of chicken is gonna come along and bump the counter up too soon, right? And also is gonna dump that thing in there, so that's not great. So, I kind of think in addition to this being a sorter, um, we need a sorter here to count when stuff has come out. Um, so that we can afford to send something back in. Like, this sorter is not going to be used as the input to the fryer anymore. This one is. So when this sorter C senses, it does a few things. It tells sorter B, 
It isn't just going to tell Sorter B to go right, though. Because sometimes we will have wanted... ...to throw this away, because we'll count we'll have made enough items, right? Well, okay, we need somewhere a counter of how many things we still want. Does this have to be a sorter? Would it be better if it was a conveyor belt and a sensor? Seems like it would be, right? Because they cost the same amount of money, and I think the wiring is a little bit more complicated the other way around. Because you have to feed it back into itself or, or something. So. This sort of B. This sensor, my plan for this sensor, is to both trigger sending in the next item. Although, no. Can't I just, when this thing ejects? Like when I would send an eject signal, also send a signal to this? So right now I'm sending to here because we know, I think, that the next piece of chicken will always be waiting here if there is one. We can definitely arrange for this to be a bottleneck. So we can say sorter B. When you're zero, you should This wants to be an enabler, right? It needs to want it, it wants to have like an enable signal so that we can turn it off if we're not ready for the next bit of chicken. And this eject when when this is zero, we want to do two things. Enable this, saying, yes, you can send in the next piece if it's, if it's ready, and also change the counter, and then also eject. The problem with that is that it's stupid, 
right? Because... It works in the steady state, but it doesn't work for the very first piece of chicken that arrives here. Oh, I didn't, I somehow unwired up the chicken dispenser. Doesn't seem right. No, it's right there. Oh, I unwired up this somehow. Yeah, see, it never gets in. All right, I don't think I'm gonna finish this in today's video. We're just gonna we're just gonna do this another time. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.